Okay, so this is going to be a quick um, example problem going over Kirchhoff's rules, and we're going to be doing a couple more of them in class. So when we get to the circuit, make sure you kind of copy it down, make sure you understand what's going on in the circuit. Otherwise, uh, just hearing me talk isn't going to help. So basically, uh, Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff uh, came up with the idea that there, when you have a complex circuit, the first thing you need to do is look at what's happening in any given small part of the circuit and then that should tell you what's giving, going on in the whole circuit. So that's a lot of what we do in physics is look at the smaller case and then expand it. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to make a loop, you're going to follow what that loop does and when it goes across the resistor, if it's going with the current, you know, anytime a current goes across the resistor it loses energy, it loses voltage and then anytime it it goes the correct way on a battery, it's going to gain voltage. And then batteries usually we're going to use just to kind of keep things from being too strange. We're going to say the batteries um, give you a voltage and that's called the EMF and that's the, the Greek letter epsilon or a script E. So basically any, every time there's a junction you can treat everything going into and coming out of the junction as a separate wire and we're going to treat each of those as being a separate separate current. And so all the current going into the junction equals the current going out. All right, so let's look at this first wire, or first circuit. And what I'm going to call wire 1 goes between 2 to 1 to 6 to 5. So on this side, the outside, uh, left left hand side of this circuit, wire 2 is going straight between 2 and 5 across resistor 2. And then wire 3 is going to go 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, those, those three portions of the wire. You can imagine kind of snipping them off and just looking at the current only in that wire because there's nowhere else to go. Once you're on, you're going two, three, four, five. Once you're on that path, there's, you can't get off of it until you get back to this junction. Same thing about two to five. You're going from here to here. Once you're on that wire, you're on that wire along there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the current through the battery current one the current through resistor 2, R2, and the current through resistor 3, R3, which makes sense. So those are my currents, and I'm going to look at this junction here. This junction here, we have I1 coming in, I2, and I3 going out. Then if I'm going to call my first loop, and so those are my currents, that's the junction rule. Then if we look at the loop rule, I'm going to do one loop that's going from 6 to 1 to 2 to 5 to 6, making that loop, so I'm going with the current each time through the battery and through R1 it's I1 then when I split up here it's I2 and then when I get back to the battery it's I1 again I1 again. and then I'm also going to do another loop. Now I have two choices to do my other loop. I can either go 2, 3, 4, 5 back to 2 or I can go 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all the way back around there. And I'm going to choose to do that. I'm going to go the left hand portion of it and then all the way around the outside. It doesn't really matter which one we choose, but that's the one I'm going to choose for now. So the junction rule, current one is going in, current two and three are coming out. So I can rewrite that. I'm going to call that my equation number one, Roman numeral I. I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero because this is coming in, these two are going out. Then if we look at loop one, the battery provides a voltage. I1 going across R1 is a voltage drop. I2, R2 is a voltage drop. And then you get back to the starting point, zero. And then if I rearrange that, I'm going to call it Roman numeral two, I1, R1 plus I2, R2 equals the battery voltage. Then if we go around the outside, instead of going through resistor two, we go through resistor three. So the battery is going to be equal, the, the battery is added, then the two resistors are subtracted, so we have I1, R1, and I3, R3 equal the battery voltage. So that's three equations. So let's look at some possible values here. Let's say it's a 10 volt battery and we have these three resistances. So my equation becomes I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero, and then when I replace R, we get 5I1 plus 10I2 equals 10. 
and 5i1 plus 6i3 equals 10. Basically what we can do is take equation 2 minus equation 3, plug that back into equation 1, plug that results into equation 2, solve for i2, then we'll get i, i1 and i3. And what you can do is you get that result. You should try and, and solve for it. You can get the current through each of those wires, and it's going to be I1 is 1.143, that's 248, and 714. So it kind of adds up there. Or I'll show you if you, if you have a calculator um, that can do matrices, you can actually do um, what's called a reduced row echelon form. Uh, it's basically solving this equation for you. It's not that hard of an equation to solve, but you should be able to get to this point. All right, we'll do some more examples of this. So look at it, go back through it, see what I did with the circuit, and you should be able to solve along there. All right, thanks a lot.